What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the 2024 Volkswagen Jetta GLI. For those that are unfamiliar, the GLI is basically the performance version of the Jetta. So similar to the Hyundai Elantra N-Line or the Honda Civic Si, it just offers some more performance features as well as some specific accents that you'll notice throughout the whole vehicle that give it that extra sporty performance look. And you'll see a lot of those here up front. You've got this red accent trim that runs across the front. You've got your GLI specific badging. You've got these little red accents down here at the bottom of the front fascia. You've got red brake calipers as well. Some stuff on the inside, some GLI badging on the side. We'll take a look at all of that in this video. But let's just go ahead and start up front. You have a full suite of LED headlights here. You've got LED daytime running lights as well. And then you have LED tail lights in the back, which we'll take a look at in just a second. Here on the front grille, you've got some nice kind of hexagonal accents here. Like I said, that red trim piece, as well as a lot of chrome, nice big Volkswagen badge here, body colored splitter, and some more air intake down here at the bottom. And then kind of a little interesting lip at the bottom of the front bumper. Some black accents here, gloss black, and then these little red accents around these kind of fake ventilation ports. They don't really have any pass through or anything, but they look nice. Now under the hood of every single GLI, no matter which edition you get, there's a couple different ones we'll talk about in a sec. You're going to get the same 2.0 liter turbocharged DOHC four cylinder, 228 horsepower, 258 pound feet of torque, 36 miles per gallon highway. You heard me correct. 36 miles per gallon highway, 26 miles per gallon city. The fuel economy on the Jetta is incredible and it remains so on the GLI as well. It does sit on 18 inch wheels. These are a two-tone alloy wheel. And obviously, like I said, you can see those bright red brake calipers poking through there. They look excellent. Some red and chrome GLI badging on the side. And it has a nice contrast with this pure gray exterior color that we have going on here. Body colored side mirrors in that pure gray with integrated turn signals. Manual folding mirrors here, but they are heated and they do have blind spot monitoring built into them. And these mirrors do have position memory as well. Keyless access on the door handles. You have this little button here you can push to lock her up. Panoramic power tilting and sliding sunroof up top. Some really nice accent lines too on the side of the body there. You got one that leads all along the door panels and then one little accent piece at the bottom. Up front here, you do have rain sensing windshield wipers as well. A couple of the other performancey type features, you do have a VAQ limited slip front differential lock, XDS cross differential system, variable ratio electromechanical power steering, and a four wheel independent sport suspension. Then moving to the back of the GLI here, as I mentioned, you do have LED taillights here and these kind of wrap all the way around. So you get a little bit extra on the back panel here, which looks really cool. Volkswagen badge in the center, nice simple GLI badging there and no other real badges. So I think it looks really clean back here. You have a rear camera up under here. You do have some reflectors down at the bottom and gigantic dual chrome tipped exhausts down here. You can see one and two. bit of a diffuser at the bottom with this little accented plastic piece. If we go ahead and open the tailgate right up, it is not a power lift gate, just a manual lift gate here. But you do get a pretty decent sized trunk here. This has about 14 cubic feet of storage space with the second row seats up. You fold those down, obviously you can get a little more. And you can see you get your cargo protection system, you know, organizers and things back here. Monster mats here as well that have your red GLI accent badging on them right there. You've got a roadside assistance kit right here as well. So this has things like jump cables and a flashlight, a multi-tool, some little cones in case you have to stop on the side of the road, fix a tire or something like that. And then you also do get this little first aid kit as well from Volkswagen. So this has 77 pieces in it and it has things like bandages, alcohol pads, scissors, tweezers, gloves, adhesive tape, and things like that just in case you get a little boo-boo when you're driving. Then you can see all that storage space right here. You've got some levers you can drop your second row seats. And then if we lift up this back seat area, you do have a spare tire underneath as well as all of your tools which is great and you can see your speaker system back here as well that's probably your subwoofer right there for your speakers but we'll go ahead and load everything back up close her up and hop inside all right, so hopping inside the cabin here, a couple things really jump out. First of all, all of the red accents you're gonna get with this GLI package looks really nice. You can accent it also on the gauge cluster there, which we'll take a look at. So you've got a little accent here at the bottom of the steering wheel. You've got it around the shift knob here, a little accent trim throughout the cabin. So we'll go around all of it here, but starting over on the door panels, you have a little bit of a soft touch rubber up top. Then you have gloss black plastic around the most contacted area of the cabin. No, God, please, no, no! 
Then you have a little black accent piece. And although this is gloss black plastic, it kind of has some lines on it, like some gray and red accent lines. It actually looks kind of cool. I really like that. I'm not a big fan of like faux wood grain. And this is kind of like black wood grain faux, but it's probably meant to just more be sporty, but it kind of looks like, like some black and red accented wood, which I don't think exists in real life. So obviously it's fake, but you've got a little bit of leather here at the bottom with some accent stitching here that is red. And then all of your like handles and knobs and everything are all plastic and it's pretty much plastic from there down. You do have a little bit more of an accent here on the armrest portion, so you don't have to put your arm on plastic, but then like even the speaker grill at the bottom is just plastic there. And that same kind of theme of that hard black plastic basically is everywhere in the cabin from about the bottom of the infotainment center down. Everything up top is a soft touch rubber leather feeling material with some accent stitching, and then more of that accented black and red plastic here as well. Now moving on down from that, you do have more gloss black plastic around more of the most contacted areas. <laughs> But then they do a smart thing where they just put matte plastic that is black around the buttons and push to start engine here, which I can really appreciate. Then more black plastic here around your cup holders. And it's all pretty much like a thick molded material. Like it's not very premium feeling. This is a performance style vehicle, but it's still relatively affordable at $34,000. So you're not gonna expect the highest quality materials at this price point. Now the steering wheel is nice. You do have a leather wrapped steering wheel here with some kind of perforated grips for these handles here, flat bottom to it. Then you have your touch capacitive buttons on the left and right side. So if we go ahead and turn the car on, you can see those they actually illuminate through the steering wheel you've got your adaptive cruise control and your travel assist over on this side which i love travel assist we'll take a look at that in the test drive portion and then you can control your driver information display using the buttons right here and then you can turn your heated steering wheel on as well but then past the steering wheel here you do have the volkswagen digital cockpit pro this is a 10.25 inch driver information system fully digital but you do have two little analog bits on the side that show you both oil temperature and your fuel remaining. And then you get some little lights on the side as well. It looks like the engine lights on, but that is surely just because I'm in accessory mode. There's nothing wrong with this brand new car. Well, there is one thing and I'll talk about that in the test drive, but if we go back to the driver information display, you can switch through all of these different views. So you have a couple different like gauge layouts, like more information, less information. You can do analog looking gauges on the digital display, which I think look really nice. And all of the little accent colors and things can be customized. And I'll show you how to do that in just a sec. But then if you use the little buttons on the side, you can actually switch through what information is in the middle. And that gives you things like, you know, your navigation, your vehicle status, driving range, assist systems, you know, all that kind of stuff is gonna show up on that display. Paddle shifters here on the back, light wiper controls behind the steering wheel and then you do have another little lighting controller over on the left side of the steering wheel but other than that there's really not any buttons or dials over on this side one vent here two vents here and one vent there. And then if we move on over here, you have an eight inch infotainment display. And this has all of the kind of standard things we come to expect from a Volkswagen infotainment system, but it is not the most up-to-date system, right? This is the one generation back system. Still works great. It's a good system. It still looks good. Honestly, it hasn't aged poorly at all. It's not the newest one that Volkswagen has on, you know, most of their up-to-date models. I'm sure when the Jetta gets refreshed and has that updated system, the GLI will be right behind it. But for this generation here in 2024, you have this same MIB system, but it has radio, Bluetooth, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. You've got uh, on-screen climate controls, you know, Wi-Fi hotspot. You can see your very, very low quality backup camera. That's something I really hope they fix in the next generation. And then you have a Climatronic dual zone climate control system. So individually adjustable driver and passenger, and then you can sync them up if you want to. You also have heated and ventilated seats for driver and passenger, which is awesome. Past that, you do have a Qi enabled wireless charging pad here. So you can drop your phone right down on that get that thing charging and then two USB-C ports as well plus a 12 volt outlet right here this is kind of the old style you know plug 12 volt outlet that brings me back push to start engine button here and then you have your seven speed DSG automatic transmission with Tiptronic here and sport mode as well and it is leather trimmed at the bottom with like I said that little red accent that runs around it and then red accent trim down the center electronic parking brake you can change your drive modes right here between eco comfort normal sport and custom have your auto start stop engine disable button and then you have your traction control button here as well. Two cup holders and this weird little slot for something. Let me see if a chapstick fits in there. You can fit almost two chapsticks in this little spot. And then right here on your leather appointed armrest, you can lift that up and you get a nice deep pocket with an additional USB-C charging port. So lots of charging ports here. And then just your traditional pretty decent sized glove box here. 
And then you can't really see it here in the broad daylight, but you do have multicolor ambient lighting up underneath. It runs across the dash here under this lip. And like I said, it will customize kind of the little accents on both your driver information display as well as the infotainment system. Auto dimming rear view mirror here, but no kind of compass or anything on it. It's pretty low featured there, but nice to have auto dimming. Got some dome lights up here. And then like I said, you've got your sunroof controls for your tilting and sliding panoramic roof right here. Little sunglasses holder as well. Black liner, which I think looks really nice. And you can close this up if you want extra coverage from the sun. And as you can see on the A pillar here, you do have a Beats audio system. So it's gonna be a nice bass heavy system if you're into that kind of thing. And as far as these seating surfaces go, you have these Vienna leather seating surfaces here. These are in Titan black with the red accent stitching. And then you have these red perforations behind there as well. Really comfortable. And like I said, they are heated and ventilated for driver and passenger. The driver is a power adjustable seat with position memory. The passenger is just a manually adjustable seat. But again, they are pretty comfortable seats. Not the most comfortable seats I've ever sat in, but you know, for this price point, very comfortable. So then hopping here into the back seat of the GLI, you actually have a really generous amount of passenger volume back here. I'm pretty impressed by it. I had my seat basically to where I'd have it as a 6'1 driver. I might scoot it up a little bit, but you know, I've got about two inches of rear leg room here. You can tuck your feet up underneath the seat. You've got great headroom here with this nice hump in the roof here. The shoulder space isn't great, but it's what you'd expect at this size vehicle. You fold the center console down, you'll get an armrest and two more cup holders here. Now you do have a pretty large large transmission hump right here. It basically makes your, you know, third seat of this five seater almost unusable. So I would basically say, unless you have a really tiny kid, that this is not really gonna work for even three children. It's gonna be pretty cramped, but two kids, no problem. I mean, you can see if I scoot over here and I put my feet on this, I mean, that's just crazy. That's just not comfortable to sit at all. You could put your foot on either side, but then again, it's just not great. You don't have any vents back here and you don't have any outlets as well. So you're pretty much stuck. No map pocket on the back of this seat, but you do have one on the back of the passenger seat. We've got some speakers over here on the door panels, but then it's pretty much just black plastic all the way down this entire door panel. Handles, hooks, hooks here. Then you've got some, uh, lights there as well. Pretty spacious, honestly, for two passengers. I'd only recommend two passengers, no matter kids or adults. All right, let's take the GLI here for a little test drive. Get a startup. Again, we have a two liter turbocharged inline four, 228 horsepower, 258 pound feet of torque. And definitely what I've noticed just in driving it around for the beginning portion of this video is it is on the noisy side. Both engine noise, road noise, wind noise is a little bit high. We'll do a decibel reading here in just a bit and uh, get actual numbers behind all that, but you can hear it even right there. Let's go ahead and get an acceleration. It's got a nice beefy sound, right? This is the performance version of the Jetta. So it's gonna have that extra little, uh, that extra little grit to it. And you can definitely tell it has that. It sounds really nice. Like that sounds good. All right, let's get our first DB reading here at city speeds. right around 65 or so. Like I said, that's at city speed, so it's definitely on the noisier side. And I mentioned a little bit earlier in the video that there's one little flaw that I've noticed. This is a brand new car. Just got it on the lot, just got it through service. And there seems to be occasionally, not all the time, but occasionally a little bit of a rattling coming from that side over by the door panels. I'm not sure exactly what it is. It's actually not doing it right now. So maybe it's resolved itself. Maybe it was some kind of airflow thing. I'm not sure, but it was a little bit of a rattle going on and I'm not hearing it right now. So that's good. If it does do it, I'll point it out to you guys. But the overall feel of the cabin is actually really nice. It's all very driver centric. So the infotainment display is actually angled towards the driver. The steering wheel, you know, it's got a nice feel to it. It's bolstered and got those thick perforated grips with the flat bottom design. It's really nice. And obviously the Volkswagen digital cockpit has always been a top notch driver information system ever since it came out several years ago. I do prefer the graphics package on newer models. I've actually taken a look at that in the updated GTI. So if you're interested, I'll have that video linked 
below. I like the updated graphics package on that version better than this, but this is still fine. It still looks good. You can switch the different views with these touch capacitive buttons. Obviously, some people love them, some people hate them. I don't mind them as much. But all the graphics look good. You can click these different buttons to switch through the different systems. You got adaptive cruise control with travel assist, which we'll try in just a bit. All this is great. Again, not the most up-to-date infotainment, not the most updated driver information center, but they both still work really well. And I do like the design of the cabin in here. It's a little plain, little, you know, boring is not the right word, but just a little on the dull side. It's basically just all black all the way down, black rubber here, black plastic here all the way, black seats. But they do add that nice pop of color with the red accents on the trim pieces and the steering wheel and the shift knob and the seats and all that. So you do get a little hint of that, you know, color popping through, which is nice. And obviously you can customize the interior lighting accents, so that'll give an extra little boost there. But while we've got a little bit of a city cruise going here, let's talk about three things I really like and three things that are not my favorite. Let's start off with the three things that I really like. First and foremost, I love ventilated seats. So the fact that this has ventilated seats at this price point at $34,000 is super nice. I've had these on all day. It's a nice toasty 77 degree day today. And so I've had these nice cooled seats on to help keep me less sweaty, not completely, but a little bit less, which has been really nice to have. So I'm a big fan of that. I also really like the design of the exterior of this vehicle. I like the little red accent pieces. I think it looks really sporty. And I really like having the red brake calipers popping through on those two-tone alloy wheels. It looks really nice. And then finally, for number three, it's really fun to drive. And I think the normal Jetta is actually pretty fun to drive as well. But having this, you know, little boost in horsepower up to 228, having that extra torque, having the nice kind of loud, beefier sounding engine, those dual exhausts really putting in work, it just sounds beefy and you can get a really nice sound to it. I can roll down the window a little bit, give it something. You can hear that turbo spool. It lost traction there a little bit. That was weird. It like skipped a little bit, but you could definitely hear the turbo there. So now three things that I don't like as much. First and foremost, I don't think these seats are super comfortable. They're not uncomfortable by any means. You're not gonna get in here and go, ugh, I just hate this, but they're just not the most comfortable. But it really helps to have that ventilated option I mentioned in the pro column. And if it's in the winter or just a little bit cooler out, you can pop those heated seats on, that's great. Also having that heated steering wheel helps. I think they look nice and they have a lot of great functionality with the position memory and stuff, but they're just not the most comfortable seats. I feel like I'm lacking a little bit on the bolstering lower part of my back. I'm gonna put the lumbar support out a little bit and see if that helps a little bit, but they're just not the most cushiony seats that you'll ever sit in. But again, we are talking a $34,000 price tag. Also, I'm gonna put build quality into the con section. I'd almost describe it as like a utilitarian cabin a little bit. There's just plastic everywhere. I understand the price tag we're talking about here, but it would be nice to have a little bit more premium materials, maybe on the door panels, just a little bit lower, maybe a leather wrapping around the arm rest or something like that uh, just to give it that extra because this still is on the high end of the Jetta price point so you know you're almost top of the line as far as the pricing of the Jetta goes you'd think that maybe just a little bit more padding on the handles maybe a little bit nicer trim stuff like that might help the cabin a little bit but it does have some nice points like I said that leather wrapped heated steering wheel with the grips and the red accent plastic that's all nice you could take it up a notch just a little bit then I guess my third con would just really be the kind of outdated infotainment system Volkswagen systems really have looked great for a long time. The functionality can be debated, but they've looked good for a long time. So it's not that big of a con, but if I had to pick one more thing that I'd put into that lower tier column, I think it would just be it needing a little update there, which I'm sure is coming when the Jetta gets redesigned. Let's go ahead, hop here onto the highway, give it a little juice, and we can get a decibel reading here at highway speeds. See what I'm talking about? It's noisy. 73. I think that's the highest. I can't remember what the Camaros was that I reviewed, but it's up there for sure. I mean, that engine sounds nice, right? You can hear that turbo <laughs> right at the end there. We're in kind of a lot of traffic here, so I don't know. We can try the travel assist here. Turn that on. Turn this on. Yeah, set it. It is going. So it's keeping me in the center of the lane, keeping me pretty far away from these cars in front of me. I'm gonna go ahead and switch lanes. And it's gonna slow me down even more because of this car, but it's keeping me in the center of the lane. It's speeding me back up once this car moves. So 
this is a great driver fatigue assistant, and I've always liked Travel Assist. It works well on pretty much every car I've ever tried it on. It's not gonna take you around anything crazy, right? It's not gonna take you like city steering or anything like that, but I mean, you can see even taking me off the ramp, like it's turning me pretty significantly. So on the highway, you're not gonna have any problems using this system. It's gonna work great for you. That's in sport, so let's switch the drive mode to normal. Let's see the acceleration curve here. It still absolutely goes, man. I almost like that better than the Sport. The Sport's kind of jerky a little bit. That was really smooth acceleration. Got up to speed real quick. All right, now that we're sitting at idle, let's go ahead and get a DB reading here. So right around 46 with the engine going, if we cut the engine, right around 40 or 41. Yeah, it's really quiet, honestly, at idle when that engine really turns down a little bit. And again, I always mention knowing your audience, right? People are buying the GLI because they want a performance version of the Jetta. And when they want a performance version, they want it to sound like a performance version of the Jetta. I think they do a good job. While it's not the most quiet on the highway or overall road noise, a lot of that is because of the engine just being that beefier sound to it. I think if that's what you are wanting, that extra road noise, you want to feel connected and all that kind of stuff with that louder engine, you're going to go with the GLI and it's definitely going to uh, quench that thirst. But let's uh, go up to one of these kind of windier roads and kind of feel how the steering is. It's felt pretty good so far. It's definitely more sporty. You definitely feel a little more connected to the road. It's not as smooth, a little bit bumpy. If you want a performance model, that's what you want. Yeah, that's just got a real nice acceleration curve in normal mode. Let's go to sport again. That delay. They probably couldn't feel that, only I can feel that, but there's like a very noticeable delay and then it just mm, it goes. You can hear the turbo go. Alright, just pedal to the floor right here. So that was zero to 45. I, mean, I don't know if you could hear it, but I lost traction and the little traction control thing popped up and you could hear it. It's front wheel drive, so you can feel the wheels like losing traction as it's trying to get grip, but then once it grips, you just absolutely go. That sounds awesome. I love when you get up there, you hear that little from the turbo. I don't know what the zero to 60 is. I need to look that up. 6.1 seconds. I can see that. I can see that. Just a little bit slower than my Tesla. Just a little bit slower. But it feels much slower because of that, you know, not having that instant torque, but still plenty fast. So should you pay an extra, you know, $4,000 on average for the GLI here versus a top of the line normal Jetta, just the SELR line? Well, I think it really depends on what's important to you. If you like a little bit of a smoother ride, a quieter ride, but still maintaining crazy fuel efficiency, then no, you shouldn't. I would get the lower price, top of the line, SELR line Jetta in 2024. It's gonna have a lower powered engine though, but if you want that increased performance, you wanna go from the 1.5 liter base model engine that you just get across the board up to that two liter turbocharged engine, you want that almost 70 more horsepower and 70 more pound-feet of torque. You want that louder exhaust, that louder cabin noise, that louder engine noise, still getting some of the great safety features, some of the great technology, some of the great you know comfort features like the ventilated seats, the heated seats, the heated steering wheel, all that kind of stuff. If you want all that kind of wrapped up into one package, it's going to cost you, right? It's going to be around 34000 on average for this GLI versus you know around 30000 for a top of the line you know, standard Jetta. So it really just depends on what is important to you. And of course, I can't make that decision for you. You'll just have to, you know, go test drive them and see. If you want my opinion and I was choosing one, I think I'd probably go with the GLI if I was choosing directly between the two. And I think it's just because it's more fun to drive. Although it's tough for me because I don't particularly like cars that are loud. And this car obviously is gonna be louder than your standard Jetta is going to be. It's tough, but I think I'd go with the more engaging driving experience that you get here on the GLI versus the standard Jetta. But I'd probably be debating it because I do like that smooth, quiet ride. You really can't go wrong either way. It's going to really be up to you guys what is important to you and where your priorities are when purchasing a new car. They're both great and I've enjoyed driving both. I've also reviewed the most recent Jetta, so I've got a link down in the description if you want to check out that video. But drop a like if you did enjoy this video. Leave a comment down below and let me know what you think about the GLI and which one you'd pick between the standard Jetta and the GLI. And don't forget to hit subscribe so you don't miss every single new video the second I hit publish. We'll see you in the next one.